Okay. All right, we're going to go ahead with the challenge now at this point. And I, I chose to come out of Ecclesiastes uh, for this morning. And uh, I'm not going to preach, preach a message per se. But Ecclesiastes is a very, uh, I don't know, when you first look at it, it's a very depressing book to me. <laughs> well, you know, you do a cursory reading of the book of Ecclesiastes, you look at it, it's very, it seems very pessimistic. Uh, the theme of it, uh, if you want to call it the theme, I don't think it's the, 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 in the, the theme as it relates to Solomon's intent and what he wants to accomplish in writing this book. But, but the, the theme is proclaimed, vanity of vanities, all is vanity, says the preacher. And that, that is in chapter 1, verse 2, and it's repeated in 12.8, but it's also restated all the way through the book at various points. As Solomon, as, and I'll, I'll make you aware of that in a moment, but it's, it's repeated like chasing and striving against the wind and these things. And he hits on these these empty things that that, that, that that there's just no no lasting value to this world, this existence. And and Solomon writes this, but you have to understand when you look at the book because when you do look at it, if you just read it, you're depressed. I mean, until you get to the end of it, you're like, oh man, <laughs> it's just terrible. You know, this whole you know, there's nothing under the sun that's worth a hoot. You know, it's all empty. It all comes up to naught. That's, and, and that's what we have reiterated here. But if you understand what Solomon's doing, his conclusion, the end of the book, but also the purpose of the book, you start realizing that, yeah, the, the mood of the book seems very pessimistic, and it is. But, that, but the author, that is Solomon, is not a pessimist. He's not, he's not totally cynical about everything. It seems that way. He's not even a skeptic in reality because what he is is he's a believer and his intent is to destroy people's confidence in their own efforts. To destroy people's confidence in their own abilities. To destroy people's confidence as it relates to their own righteousness their own knowledge, their own wisdom, and ultimately to cause, cause them and drive them, push them toward a belief in God. That, that's the intent of, of the book. And he sets out in, in, in this, and he's trying, Solomon is on a journey, if you will. I've often looked at the book as his journal of his journey, kind of like Pilgrim's Progress, where we see where he, where Pil, uh, Pilgrim, where Christian went along the journey and the stops along the way. Well, this is Solomon. And by the way, who's Solomon? We know who Solomon is. He's the wisest. He, he, was, he was given, he asked God for wisdom so he could be the best king that he could possibly be for Israel. And because he asked not for himself but for Israel, God blessed him with a gift of is, uh, wisdom unparalleled. There, no one else possessed it on any level like Solomon did. That's significant because when you look, consider what he does here is he goes on this journey and he does this, understand, he doesn't just do it by observation, he does it by immersing himself into the experience. Uh, it's empirical. He, 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 his experience is part of the journey. He actually does the very thing. He's in a capacity as king who possesses wisdom and knowledge above all others. And he's able to go through a, on a journey to look for purpose under the sun. And he does that. And he, he records that. God does. records that in the book Ecclesiastes. Ecclesiastes. And we get to see one who was able and allowed of God to do to travel this course on a, in a way that none of us could probably ever do because of his wealth and his power and his wisdom. And he immersed himself in, in this journey to find purpose on the horizontal, a reason for living. And I'm going to tell you, we all want to we all want to have an impact. We all want to be relevant in our time. Whether it's in one person's life or many people's life or a community or whatever, 
man in general wants to feel relevant. We want, we want to feel like we're here for a reason. And Solomon starts out on looking for that. And he puts himself to that, that, that purpose. So when we move through here, I want to read one portion to start with because this kind of says what I just said to you in, in his own words in chapter 1, verses 12 through 17. And this tells you what he sets out uh, to do. Chapter 1, 12 through 7. While the king... Oh, I'm in song, song. Sorry. <laughs> I'm, I'm jumping back and forth. Here we go. I, the preacher, have been king over Israel in Jerusalem, and I set my mind to seek and explore by wisdom concerning all that has been done under the sun. It is a grievous task which God has given to the sons of men to be afflicted with. I have seen all the works which have been done under the sun, and behold, all is vanity and striving after the wind. What is crooked cannot be straightened, and what is lacking cannot be uh, counted. I said to myself, Behold, I have magnified and, cre- and increased wisdom more than all who were over Jerusalem before me. And my mind has observed a wealth of wisdom and knowledge. And I set my mind to know wisdom and to know madness and folly. And I realized that this also is striving after the wind. Because in much wisdom there is much grief. And increasing knowledge results in increasing pain. Basically, he's telling us this, what he was allowed to see. What he did is he took several pit stops, and I'm, we're not going to take the time to do that because I want to get to the conclusion because that's what we're really headed for. But the doors that he passed through on the journey, the things that he pursued in find, trying to find meaning, trying to find satisfaction under the sun, he started out with wisdom and his knowledge. God had already blessed him with great wisdom. And knowledge, but what he just said there is with the wealth of knowledge and the wisdom that he had, he was able to see things for what they are on the horizontal. And what he said was, is it's empty in and of itself. All of that wisdom, all of that knowledge is is futile. He does go on to say later in the letter that wisdom, even though on the horizontal, in and of itself isn't lasting. He said there is more value to wisdom and knowledge in, in life. Than in folly, in, in pursuing foolishness, just common, common sense, basically. You're not going to make decisions that are more destructive because you have a, a proper understanding. So there's value in that regard. But over the long haul, it comes up empty. It comes up empty. He pursued pleasure, literally, all the way into, uh, we're talking hedonism, where he went into vice uh, and and. and, and Pursued pleasure from drink to uh, wives, whatever he wanted, he had the power to pursue, and he, he went that road. And, and I'm going to tell you, many take that road. We continue to chase our pleasures like it's going to fill our life and give it purpose and meaning and satisfaction. And, and he, he says that was empty, that was vanity. Then for the workaholics, for the ones who think laboring day in and day out are going to give you the, the, the satisfaction in the end, it's not. That too comes up empty. And what he said about that was, is when you labor and you labor, guess what? You have to leave it at some point. Somebody else is getting the fruits of your labor. You hope it's your children, but what if your children get it and they're morons? <laughs> and, and, and they squander or do whatever. That was the grief that he had. Basically, that's what he struggled with. Is you're turning over to idiots. You build a, you build a, a legacy and no one cares. You're forgotten afterwards. So that, that pursuit doesn't work out. He had wealth. He went after wealth and, and money and possessions and, and just getting and having and getting more. And more, he had stables that were unmatched in, in the known world at the time. Just, just horses, the, the, the best in the, in the, the tile, entire world. Solomon's stables were known throughout the world. He, he possessed all kinds of, of, of wealth. He built things. He, he poured himself into building things, accomplishments, trying to build this city or that city and the, and the temple and and different things thinking that would bring fulfillment. What he found, this wise man, 
this Solomon that God had blessed with wisdom beyond all others, when he went and lived this out in the end, he said, in, in and of themselves, they, they bring emptiness. They're, they're not going to fulfill uh, your life. See, God, God, I just had a conversation recently with someone. And they said, I, 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 I've, got a, I've got a, there's something missing. There's something missing in my life. And, and uh, I just let them talk. <laughs> and they started telling me that I, they've done this, I've done this, and I've done this, and I've done this. But, I, but I, I, there's still something missing. I, I can't get it. I know. And then they, she said, you have it. We have this. That's what she, that by, by her own perception, they were able to see that the Christian has this. And I said, well, you know what it is. <laughs> it's, and they're like, I think so. And I said, well, what? She said, God. And I said, that's right. That's right. It's the Lord. And, and that's the conclusion. When Solomon gets to the end, in and of themselves, laboring, accomplishments, degrees, all of those things, those are wonderful things in life. But if God's not in the equation, they, they're not going to bring the satisfaction. And what satisfaction it does bring, what you're going to find is it's very fleeting. So you got to get on the next one. You got to you got to run at the next thing. You got to run at the next thing because you can't. You're not finding it. You're not able to grab hold of it. So we get to the end of the book, the end of the letter, and really, I, I think this is a great book where you kind of cheat and go to the last part. I'm serious because it lines you out right out of the gate. What's going on? Because if you start out in, in one and you're not hearing what he's saying. You're thinking this guy's nuts, you know. That 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 they're, and, and you, like I said, you get to the end, you're depressed. But if you start with the the conclusion and you understand, this is what this is all about, is getting to this place. And what he says at the very end, he says, "In words of in excuse me, the words of the wise of the, of wise men are like goads." He's talking wisdom. And the masters of these collections are like well-driven nails. He's saying that to accumulate wisdom, to understand where he's going to get this, you're like a well-driven nail because they're given by one shepherd. Real wisdom, true wisdom that comes to the right conclusion. That's coming from the Lord. That's coming from the Lord. And then he goes on and he says this in verse 13, the conclusion. The conclusion, when all has been heard, what's all has been heard? Ecclesiastes chapter 1 all the way to chapter 12. When all has been heard, everything I've said, here's the bottom line. Here's the bottom line. Fear God. Fear God. And keep His commandments. Because this applies to every person. For God will bring every act to judgment. Everything which is hidden, whether it's good or evil. So here's the Old Testament. This is Old Testament. I know you were hoping to say, would say, trust Jesus and be saved. No, it's Old Testament. And what he's saying is, fear God. What's he saying? Believe in God. Revere the Almighty. Hold Him high. Let Him be God in your life. Let Him be that. Let Him be exactly who He is. Whether we say He is or not, that's one of the things I love about the letter in Malachi. Whether we give Him that place or not, it does, it's meaningless because He occupies it anyway. He's God. And He said the end of all things is for you. For If, you're look, if you want satisfaction, revere God. Revere God and keep to His Word. What you know that He has said, stay that course. Keep to the Word. Hold to the truth. Hold Him and His Word in their proper place in their lives. And then He goes on to say, because guess what? We all are going to count for our time. 
how we go through this life, what we did try to fill that void with. Labor, pleasures, possessions, riches, whatever, whatever bobble the world throws at us, we think we can use and fill that up. No, he's saying the only thing that's going to matter is whether we filled it up with him. Whether we filled it up with the Lord. And he, we account for it, whether bad or good. And I love that part of it because it's not a bad thing. Account, accounting is not a bad thing unless all we do is live bad. But when we're living and loving, the Lord come standing before Him is a blessing. It's a wonderful thing to stand before God when you've loved Him and lived for Him and revered Him your whole life. And that should be the course we want to travel. This comes from the wisest man of Scripture. Probably the wisest in the world because he was gifted of God with a wisdom beyond everybody else. I mean, that, that, that's his, the place that he's given in, in, in Scripture. He, he was, had a wisdom beyond his peers. And his conclusion is fear God, keep his commandments, because we all have an accounting sometime. Let's pray. Lord, we love you. We thank you for our time here. And I thank you for this, this uh, truth that is here in the book of Ecclesiastes. I pray, Lord, that we might even go from here and just take the time to read this short book, but understand the journey Solomon went on. And that uh, we could see it and maybe even understand some of the failings in our own lives by the things we pursue when in reality we need to clear those out of our life and pursue you more fully, Lord. But I pray that we would truly be people of God in our time and in this place uh, in, in, in where we live in America. And I, I just pray that uh, we'd have the impact that we ought to have uh, on, on our society and on our communities, and upon one another for your glory. That, that, that's our heart, Lord. And we're thankful for your word this day. Just bless it to our hearts now, in Jesus' name, amen.